right, hello everyone. I hope you're having a really good week. Um, settling in, getting back into the rhythm of um, back to school, whatever back to school looks like, whether it's remote learning or, or in person. Um, I hope you're all staying healthy and are well. Few things for this week. Um, grades K through five, you guys have a Zoom class this coming Tuesday, the 12th. That'll be at 6 p.m. If you look down in your classroom and your Zoom uh, password and link are not in that box, you'll see that it says that you'll be getting that link directly from your teacher. Okay, so they'll be sending that link out to you. Um, my only request is that we once again, when you have your child log on, to have their grade next to their name when you do the renaming in the Zoom. Um, and that just helps me sort everybody a little quicker. Okay. Uh, grade six and seven, you guys have home study this week. Um, I have incorporated some videos below to cover the chapters um, from last week because we had a joint class last week. So to cover the chapter we uh, missed for sixth grade, I made a video for that. And Mrs. Samper is sending you a direct email for the homework for that class. Okay, so you're um, doing a little bit of catch up, but not too bad. So it's just to, to get everybody going on the, on the chapters that they need to be at. Uh, grades eight and nine, also year one and two confirmation. Uh, you guys have your class on Sunday nights, a Zoom class. So the link is below. And same thing when you guys rename your Zoom link, your Zoom name, if you could put your grade next to it, it just helps me sort everybody a little faster. So we will continue to do that. Grades 10 through 12, not this Sunday, but the following, um, we will post your presentation about anxiety and depression. Um, a very important topic for everybody in, uh, certainly with everything that's going on in our world. Just some signs and things to be looking out for, ways that we can have a network of support and get the help we need. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, some reminders, year one confirmation. Those of you, there are a few of you that are brand new that have just registered with us. I am sending you an email to let you know about the year one retreat. Uh, I have an online version for you to do and directions for how to do that. If you are a student that participated in the initial Zoom retreat on, what was it, November 21st, I think it was, in November, if you were at that Zoom meeting, you do not have to do the, the reflection questions. I didn't make that clear in the last newsletter, so I apologize for that. If you were at that Zoom retreat, you're all set, your attendance is covered. The retreat that I'm sending out and the reflection questions I'm asking for are for the people that were not able to join us for that retreat. So this is, their reflection questions are gonna be proof of their attendance, okay? So if you did not make that Zoom uh, retreat and you watched it at home and it got sent to you, or if you, um, didn't find it or, you know, whatever happens in Cyberland that things don't end up where they're supposed to be. If you didn't get it, you need to have that from me. So we'll make sure we get that to you. Um, and then make sure that those reflection questions are coming back. We're going to need those in by the end of March so that I can get everybody ready for the next steps for confirmation. Okay. So that's those. Also, I need your reflections for any community service that you've done and any that you're signing out for. And there's some really interesting, neat ones that are going to be coming out here in the next couple of weeks. So be watching for those and get them in. If you've done stuff for school that you've already talked to me about or run it by me or stuff that's happening in the parish, just make sure that we get those reflections, okay, so that we can make it count for you. That reflection page that you get in get into me, that's what I have to show the diocese that says you did some sort of community service. Okay, so just make sure you're getting those. The link for that is under Mrs. Obark's picture in the newsletter. If you still can't pull it up that way, then then email me and I'll send it to you a different way. Okay, your two confirmation. You guys are going to be picking up steam because we're getting ready for whatever confirmation is going to look like. Um, and we don't yet know because obviously 
our entire year is going day to day, it seems like. Um, but on January 12th, I am going to be mailing out packets that are going to go home to families to outline all the things that I need from you before we have our um, retreat in March. Okay, so if you can get these things into me by the end of March when we have our retreat, which is, I believe, March 20th. Yes, March 20th, um, which will more than likely be a Zoom retreat as well. But we are going to need your baptismal certificates, picking your sponsor, your saint name, um, and your community reflections and all that. So I am going to send that packet directly home in snail mail to you so that you have all the information and you just simply need to fill it out and send it back. That way we got everything on file and you're good to go so that when and if we're ready to have confirmation, we'll be ready to do that. Okay. First reconciliation we are going to tentatively have on February 6th. Now, obviously the rates of infection are driving our decisions about that and it changes from day to day. And right now we currently, because we're over 10% CNANs and Lords have decided not to hold in-person mass and it's all live streamed through the month of January. Just till we can get through what the Christmas totals look like and the New Year's fallout and see if by then, the end of January, we have a better idea of what it's going to look like. Our hope is still to have it on February 6th. That's our goal. We're really trying to stick with that. It may change. As we know, the whole year has been... <laughs> It may change for the whole year. Talking and the priest talking that that increases the risk. So we have to be very strategic how we do it, and we have to be careful with what the levels are. So bear with me. We're still looking at February six. If it changes, I will let you know. As we get closer to it, um, I'll be able to be definitive. But please have February six marked down <laughs> in your planner if you have a planner for this year. Um, you know, just have it on your radar that that's when we're hoping to do it. It may change, but that's the hope. So let's keep praying. If you're still not caught up with, with First Reconciliation, I've still left those videos down below in this newsletter that go through all the chapters. Make sure you're through all the chapters. We'll do a review before we actually have um, First Reconciliation. So we will we'll continue to try to keep it as fresh in our in, in our kids' minds as we can. Because then we're going to be going right into First uh, Eucharist classes shortly after. So, God willing, we'll, we'll get to the finish line here. So, thank you for your patience. I know it has been incredibly trying with trying to get this, but we want to be safe. All right. So, Tuesday, January 26th, we are going to do... Um, an outdoor service project, which will be a drive-through drop-off of donations. We are collecting socks, underwear, and actually even canned goods for uh, both the House of Mercy and for local food pantries. The need is incredibly great right now. I don't know how many of you have been following the news, but the House of Mercy has had to close its doors uh, for the month of January because of COVID and because there's nowhere for anybody to go. A lot of the homeless people are, are toughing it out out on the streets and that is leading to people that are getting exposed to cold temperatures, hypothermia, frostbite. So the goal at this point is to try to help them to get as many people, at least with warm clothing, whether it's coats and boots and then um, socks, thermal underwear, regular underwear, things that they need that they can't access as easily. And now that they're even more out in the cold and more places are shutting their doors, um, working with the, hop the homeless population over the years, um, I used to do a little more intensive work with the homeless. I can tell you from experience that during the day, you know, they go to stores and businesses and libraries and bus stations and anywhere that's warm that'll let them in. And obviously social distancing has made that 10,000 times harder. They may not be able to get in and if they're in, they can't linger, they can't stay. So this is dangerous. This is going to hurt a lot of people. So 
we have decided to take up a collection and try to, at the very least, keep people as warm as possible by donating these items. So I've outlined them here in the newsletter. We are going to collect them and, uh, and arrange a special drop-off, but there's also ways to do it through Amazon. So I have the Amazon link. Um, if you want to just have things directly sent there, that's more than fine. If you want to be a part of the drop-off donation day, um, the information and the drop-off times are down below. And we also um, will be handing out to you um, resources for Lent. If you can imagine that, we're already getting ready for Lent. <laughs> so as you drive through the circle um, in the different donation centers, you'll be dropping off donations if you if you want to do it that way. And then the last stop is to pick up the, you know, the books for the Stations of the Cross and the Lenten Reflections and things that'll help you to celebrate Lent from home as we more than likely will be all doing for a while. So if you want to participate in that, then all the information is below. It really is um, for a worthy cause. We have a lot of problems that are going to result from the pandemic that affect so many people that we're probably just not even thinking about. So this is our way of being the church to others and trying to reach out to those among us that are that are most vulnerable. Okay, so I thank you for your generosity in helping us to do that. And I think that's all I have for this week. So please continue to stay safe. Um, I know that this is a really tough time. If you are having anxiety yourself, if you're having stress, please remember that the pastoral staff is also here to help. You know, if you just even need somebody to talk to or somebody to talk about your day or what's going on with you, you know, we're not licensed therapists, but we are pastoral um, people. This is what the church is. And we we have no issue whatsoever with with talking with you and just helping you out, having a fresh perspective, praying with you. That's what we're here for. So, don't forget that you can reach out to us, even though we're not, you know, in church um, in the way that we would like. We can be the church to each other. So don't struggle alone. Let us help you. And, you know, even if it's just to to help you through a, a tough, you know, situation that you're going through or you just don't know where to turn and where does God come into all of this? And these are all common things that a lot of us are going through. And don't be afraid to reach out. You know, this is, this is not, <clears throat> you know, it's not a contest here. We all need help. So, um, just to let you know that we're available, that we're here to do that. So anyway, my friends, stay, stay safe, stay healthy. If we can help you, let us know. And as always, may God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Pray for you. Please pray for us and we'll all get through this together. Thanks everyone.